Let's have a look at how you might make MDMA from the natural product safrole. We'll need to do a few modifications on the double bond. That needs to be reduced to a methyl group, and we need to put a nitrogen in this position. A good reaction to do that is reductive amination on some ketone-like species, but that will need to oxidize our starting material. And to do that, we'll use a palladium-based reaction called the Wacker oxidation. It uses palladium 2 chloride with ligands, keeping it in solution, phosphine, not important to the mechanism. That associates with the double bond because palladium is soft and the double bond has a nucleophilic character that activates it to attack by water. That pushes the palladium onto the end of the double bond. And then the oxidation part happens with a beta hydride elimination. One of the hydrides leaves with the palladium hydrochloride as the product and gives us an enol. Palladium hydrochloride has been reduced now to palladium naught and we want to re-oxidize that with copper and molecular oxygen so that the palladium can be catalytic. The product enol now protonates quite simply, forming the ketone that we need for our reductive amination step. So a reaction with methyl amine, a fairly standard condensation, will replace that oxygen with a nitrogen. We get a hemiaminal which rapidly decomposes, oxygen leaves as water, and that can be reduced with any standard hydride reducing agent. I've drawn borohydride here. Hydride adds to the carbon and reduces that to our amine, like so. And that's the final step. That gives us a molecule of MDMA. I think there might be an alternative synthesis, however, based on ozonolytic cleavage of the safrole double bond. A general example of ozonolysis here, there's a ozone molecule, there's the double bond. Remember, the safrole looks like this. The first step in this mechanism is a dipolar cycloaddition of the ozone. All these bonds form at once, and we get this cyclic species here. That decomposes, like so, that bond breaks, and we then get a pair of molecules, one of which looks quite unstable with those adjacent charges. That bonds to the aldehyde that we produce. Uh, remember when we redraw this on the left the R group is going to be turned upside down like that and we get this second cyclic species. That can be worked up in a number of different ways depending on whether you use oxidative or reductive conditions. Um, in this example we'll use dimethyl sulfide to give us a pair of aldehydes. The DMS attacks one of the oxygens those electrons go down and form one aldehyde, another aldehyde is formed, and that oxygen leaves in a molecule of DMSO. So a pair of aldehydes there, one of the oxygens is extracted by the oxidation of the sulfur. And hopefully you'll be able to see this was relevant to the safrole because we'll have trimmed off one of the well we'll have trimmed off the terminal carbon and left ourselves with an aldehyde, which we can use for the same sort of reductive amination as before. There's the aldehyde. We'll use methylamine again. I won't draw the mechanism twice though, you know what the product is. We won't, however, reduce it. We'll leave it as the imine and then react it with methyl lithium. That's highly nucleophilic, it can attack the carbon and effectively reduce it anyway, but methylate it, which is what we want. That'll form a lithiated intermediate and then it's a simple matter of workup with acid and water, replace that lithium with a proton and we'll have MDMA.